Okay, so I I want to show you something here. Uh, we're probably not gonna I'm not gonna show you how the um, the whole repair, but I have an interesting predicament here, and I want to show you how I deal with it. So what it is, I have a broken um, spout on this vase on this pitcher, and um, I've already glued together the parts I have. This has been repaired with Hixtel. And as you can see, it's there's there are a lot of gaps here. These, all these are missing pieces, and so I have to figure out a way. The only place where this actually touches is right here on this side, and I've got good alignment there. But as you can see, it, it, it's it's not even touching the rest of the picture. So how do I hold that in place while this glue dries? So what I'm going to do is, uh, this is a hard fired ceramic, so I'm going to use Hixtel on just this area right here where I have a good um, connection. And, uh, and I'll tape that in place. And I'll take a, a, some A plus B putty epoxy that I have on a tile here. And just take a ball of that and wedge it in under here somewhere just to provide a little bit of surf uh, to, so, to provide some support on the other side it's also an adhesive so it'll sort of tack weld this in place while this uh, Hickstall cures because it takes a while it takes several days for the Hickstall to cure and then once both of those are hard this won't move and I can pack in more and more fill around there I have a lot of stuff to fill here and this has to be completely solid before I try to do that otherwise I'm going to push everything out of alignment so uh, I'm going to show you that process now just we're just going to show you bonding and f uh, tacking this together and then later on tomorrow or the next day fill that in so that's what we're going to do now so to start with I'm going to need some tape to hold down that one end and I've just got some masking tape which I will cut I only need a strip, but I cut several just in case I have a problem and have to get a different strip. It's a good idea if you're working on this kind of thing to prepare these things ahead of time so you, when you're working you can just reach over and grab the piece that you need. Alright, so I've already had my Hickstall mixed up. And I've got it on a glass rod. And more than I need. So and spread that. And then we'll tape it into place. So if I get my tape on here. Press it down, get a good grip. And now, put it in place. Alignment, it'll lock right into place. Press down my tape. It's a bit difficult because this seam over here it lines up on the outside but there's missing material on it so it's kind of unsecure on the other side you see I don't have any it doesn't touch so it's difficult to tape it in place and keep the alignment correct.
So now I've got a piece of this epoxy putty and I'll just I'm gonna cram it into here. basically like that recheck my alignment all right so it's uh, the next day this is cured overnight it's good and strong actually it's two days later and because I have the Hickstel on this part and I needed to get it cured the A plus B putty I put in there cured overnight, but this took a couple days to cure. And so it's not fully cured, but it's it's pretty it's good and strong. It's not gonna come off of there. So, okay, so now I'm gonna fill that. So I have A plus B putty here, and I'm gonna work it into this crack. So and I'm not just pushing it in to fill it. I'm pushing it up against the edges of the inside of this. I want it to get, get good adhesion. And I can't press too hard because th this is cured enough to hold it. But if I push too hard, I could snap it off. And I generally tend to <clears throat> overfill it a little bit. So I'm going to take masking tape and put it on the inside of this. This is just to back up the other side of this, this hole I'm going to fill. And it's just more coverage than it would get if I just used my finger. And it's going to stick to my finger if I use my finger. So. It's just a backup. All right, so I'll just go on. Fill this in. And I'm working it up against his inner edges.
Okay, so the hole's filled and uh, we'll need some backfill on the other side once this is cured. And uh, we'll come back tomorrow and pick up where we left off. And it is the next day, uh, and the milli, the uh, A plus B putty that I put on here yesterday is cured and hard, and we're gonna, we're going to file that down, and uh, also take off the backing tape that I put on yesterday. And as you can see, as I said yesterday, this would need a fill on the back side, and we can fill that with milli putt which I will do after I've filed down the front side. And we'll just file this down. I'll have to do a milli putt on this side as well. We'll be fine. Fills needed along the edge of what I'm filing. This is important to keep the shape of this curve as I go. This file won't hurt this ceramic. And this dark you're seeing here is my file, is from my file that'll that'll wipe right off. So I just have a, a little bit of a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and that'll that dark stuff just wipes right off. All right, so I've filed down the fills on this and I'm ready to do some more fills and I'm going to use this milliput super fine white already mixed some up <clears throat> until I'm going to force it down in there get these deep fills
And it is the next day. The milliput I applied yesterday is now cured and ready for filing. And so here we go. Okay, and here it is with the uh, fill filed down, and it is ready for paint. So this is a way um, of filling a bunch of missing pieces, like a hole in a thing. Uh, but in this case, we're using two different adhesives. One, we don't usually think of it that way. We want, when we're going to repair something, we just find the the glue or the epoxy the adhesive that you want to use and you use it on the whole thing in this case uh, it required two different types on the same connection so um, a little bit different sometimes you have to think outside the box